Kenny Omega is uh, one of the big Winnipeg stars, one of the biggest wrestling stars in the world. Maybe not in the U.S. yet. Maybe that'll change with AEW, but definitely in Japan. Uh, did you have any interaction with him over your career, also being from Winnipeg? Yeah, probably most of my career until he, you know, really took off big in Japan and moved there for for pretty much a full time basis. He started a year or two before I did. Um, but I got to spend some time traveling with him uh, when he, when I broke into the business. We did a couple trips to the U.S. together when he, you know, got a look with TNA and NWA Wildside and did his first tour in New England. And he was also uh, my tag partner as one half of the CWE Tag Team Champion. So I got to work with him quite a few times on our tours as well. And he's somebody I've considered a friend over the years, you know, with his big success. We don't get to keep in touch as much as we did. Uh, but he's he's definitely somebody I consider a friend and somebody I've looked up to in the business due to his success and, and you know, kind of carving his own path the way he has. With him being an executive in AEW, do you think there's any chance uh, they could give you a shot there down the line? I know they're going after the small wrestlers right now, but I could see you being in there, especially well, with I, Arn I, Anderson, an agent. Yeah, you know, I, I've got a, I've got a very good relationship with Arn. It's kind of weird. I probably developed a stronger relationship with Arn uh, than I do with Kenny these days. But I'd like to keep my fingers crossed that if my name did come up or if I were to submit something that I'd get a vote of confidence from him. Uh, but maybe to my own detriment, um, there's been times that I, you know, I've tried not to call in and pull in those favors um, for the amount of guys I've booked where people are like, hey, man, you should probably call and ask those guys to do something for you. Because I have booked a lot of guys that are in powerful positions. Um, but, you know, maybe I'm silly for doing it. But I, I try not to, to to lean on that too much. And if an opportunity comes my way, just hope that my name will be, you know, used in a positive fashion or I'd get a recommendation. What about Don Callis, who's one of the executives in Impact? He's from uh, Winnipeg, too. I know his company there wasn't that successful, though. Didn't he only run about a year or so with that no-holds-barred company? Yeah, he just kind of ran some spot shows in Winnipeg, and then they had a they had a, a money guy, so they ran some TVs for a short period of time. Um, but then he kind of got out of the business shortly after that. Uh, he was the booker for Tony Candelo, though, for many years. So he, he was kind of the guy that was kind of the gatekeeper for guys coming to Winnipeg that were from out of town. Um, I've, I actually, I just started developing a relationship with Don, I want to say over the last two years or whenever he is, whenever it was, he got into the business because he got out of the business pretty much the same year I started. So everybody else in Winnipeg had worked with him for 15 years and I had just missed them. I just heard different stories, good and bad from different people, mostly, you know, the bad being from people that didn't have a, a good experience with him because of where they were on the pecking order, so to speak. And I've, I've come to learn that as I've gotten to know him. Um, but as I've developed a relationship with him, I, I spoke to him briefly about impact when he first got there. And at the time they were hemorrhaging money and they weren't necessarily hiring guys without a name value, so to speak, as they were trying to, you know, build some, some brand equity first. Uh, so now maybe with the, with the jump to Anthem or sorry, with access as well, maybe some opportunities will open up that I can discuss with them. I'm shocked they haven't done a taping in Winnipeg yet because they haven't been drawing too well. And I know in Winnipeg, you guys are a hotbed for wrestling. They would probably draw really well there and possibly use some local guys like you. Yeah, well, I've, I've talked to him loosely about it. Like, I, we, we've, we've brought it up in conversation about the possibility of doing it because CWE does have a good base here. And when we do our, our big tour events, uh, when they stop in Winnipeg, we're getting anywhere from five to 700 people, which is, you know, more than Impact is drawing on a lot of their house shows. Um, this is mere speculation, but Don, Don has a very good reputation in Winnipeg. Uh, you know, not only is being like, you know, the top wrestling guy that came from here, you know, outside of Jericho, um, but after that, he got into the government and had a very high position in the government here. So I don't know if it's simply a matter of maybe not wanting to mix the two worlds or because he has such a strong reputation here, if the event doesn't go well, maybe that smears that reputation a little bit. I'm not sure what the case is. And that's just mere speculation on my part, because I think it would do well with, with, with Don if he were to come here and do it. But at the same time, there's probably some negatives to it if it doesn't go well. So I think that's probably something that's been, you know, weighed on his mind as well. And finally, Chris Jericho. I got to ask you about him as a Winnipeg wrestler. Ever meet yeah, him? Yeah, I've met him. I've, I've only met him a few times in passing when he was in town. Uh, you know, I got to have some drinks with him at the, the, the legendary Palomino Club here in Winnipeg. And I got to talk to him about an international opportunity I had coming up. And he was a really cool dude. Um, but I don't know him well whatsoever or even on a personal basis. But he was always the measuring stick for us, for us Winnipeg wrestlers, uh, for two reasons. One, because... Um, he was really the only guy from Winnipeg to actually do anything for a long period of time. You know, Don had his run as well, but, but, but Chris was a mega star and Winnipeg was pretty much a dead end for, for everybody at the time. So for him to get out there, he was always kind of that, that inspiration that, Hey, if Chris was able to do it, 
maybe there's hope for us as well. And luckily, you know, in, in recent years, there has been with guys like Kenny and, and a few others. Uh, and at the same time, too, he wasn't a very large guy. You know, I think I just, you know, he was billed on TV as 225 pounds. So he was probably 20, 30 pounds less than that. So for him to be, uh, you know, a Winnipeg guy, and not a heavyweight at a time where heavyweights dominated professional wrestling. It, it, it was kind of an inspiration and, and a light of hope for us guys here in Winnipeg that hopefully if the cards fell in the right place that guys from here can make it.